Welcome to another episode of Lessons in Learning. I'm Robert Thompson. I'll be here to help guide you through this episode uh, as we talk about some things. Specifically, we're going to talk about don't steal the art. Um, this one can get kind of deep and a little personal. You can kind of take it how you feel, you know, see what you think about it. But it came to me because I've realized through this process that initially, you know, I was practicing every day. Uh, really really hard like basically as much as I physically could do I was practicing and I was doing okay with that then I started learning about relaxation about deeper things and you know a little bit with chi and stuff like that and uh, I started getting the feeling that I was forcing myself to change like that I was it, I was trying to be in control like complete control like it didn't matter fully how my body was. If I had enough energy, I was training and doing as much as I could do it. And over time I started thinking about this and, and I wasn't sure this was a good way to do it. Um, I started looking deep within myself trying to determine why I'm doing this. You know, what is it that I'm worried about? What is it I'm afraid of? Uh, and I ended up coming to some pretty interesting conclusions. Uh, but first we'll talk about... So... You know, like I said, I started off, I was training every single day, meeting with my teacher and then training. I'd be there before class, you know, 30, 40 minutes already training uh, before we even started. And then I took some time. I moved down south, uh, gave me some time alone. And I started thinking about this. And, and I come to the conclusion for me that I was attempting to, to steal the art, you know, from the universe, if you will. It wasn't a relationship. It wasn't an interaction. It was I wanted something and I was going to do whatever, I, whatever it would take to get what I wanted. I wasn't concerned with anything else involved other than I want this and I'm going to drive at that with as much energy as I can, as often as I can until I get it. And this really didn't seem healthy. It got me thinking that probably, you know, in my past when I had gotten in trouble, I had stolen some things and it made me believe that it's likely that st being a thief or stealing, you know, in real life is something that begins internally. Like because I don't trust that I will get what I want from life unless I basically take it. Um, try to think of a good example like if I'm worried about getting a promotion or, or getting a, you know, a certain thing at my work, at, at, at my job. If I do the right steps with good integrity and discipline, I, it's not in my control. Then it's left open to a little bit of trust or faith or happenstance, however you want to look at it. But I don't have the direct control over getting that what I want. When I'm talking about like stealing the art, I'm referring to something like, well, maybe I'm going to try to manipulate my boss into thinking I'm doing really good or, or can, trying to manipulate and convince him that I'm the right choice for this job, or I'm gonna talk bad about somebody else to try to make them look worse in hopes that it'll give me a better chance of getting the job. Like these are the types of things I'm just, I'm talking about. When it comes to Tai Chi uh, in life and spiritual development, or, or to me, I believe Tai Chi in, in its deepest form is a spiritual act, you know, it's a, a spiritual activity. You know, I mean, I. I can try to make it something else, but to me, as I meditate and get deeper into this, to me, I feel like it's, it's a spiritual evolution thing. So instead of just trying to take by force what I want, I have to instead start to develop integrity and discipline. I have to start to feel and listen to my body and other feelings and, and learn how to work with them. Like some of the things I started to realize that if I practice Tai Chi, my body could use up to two or three days to to recuperate and fully rebalance itself from the practice. And for several years, I tested this. And then I would wait two or three days, and then when my body felt stable and ready, I would practice again. And for two or three years, this was the pattern that I had. You know, before then, I was practicing every single day, but I was really skinny. I wasn't, again, I was easily get, losing weight. You know, something just didn't feel right. Uh, so I started this other way. And then after two or three years of practicing this way, like 
waiting for the body to absorb the practice. Then all of a sudden I started being able to practice about every other day, every one or two days. Like my body was able to change before I was forcing control over the body and making it do what I wanted regardless of it without any concern for its well-being. Uh, so once I started this, it slowly progressed to where now, you know, I'm able to practice every day again, sometimes even t maybe twice a day. But it's always with this concern of am I taking care of myself? Am I allowing myself time to rebalance, restabilize so I can continue to grow? Or am I just forcing this change? Because for me, the body, you can force change upon it and it will have no choice but to adapt to the best of its ability. And I believe many people do this. Um, my personal feelings is those who focus more on fighting do it this way because they're in essence, they're internally already fighting life and fighting their body. So their external expression comes out as fighting, you know, even with others and interacting. Now that doesn't mean to say that if you do the way I'm talking about where you allow that you're working with the body, that doesn't mean this isn't a martial art. It just isn't fighting. Like instead you're developing Kung Fu, you're developing internal energy, you're developing all the aspects of martial arts or, 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 or that type of, you know, interaction. But it's just not with the ego and the control and the actual fighting against things. And I believe for me that this is a higher level of Tai Chi Chuan. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this lessons and learning. I felt it was important enough to put it out there. I'm sure there'll be some people that maybe don't agree or, or, or believe there's another way uh, that's better. You know, I'm open to always discuss those things. I, I don't believe I have the answers or I know it all. I'm only sharing my experience in my awareness to this point and things that are working for me. I'm still open to always taking information and exploring it and contemplating it, you know, working back and forth with ideas with others, you know, because my goal is to always continue to develop and grow. And through that, I need to always be willing to look at what I believe is true and, uh, and consider it, put it up to the light, you know, try something else because maybe there's a more true or true, you know, or something like this. But uh, this was just my little tidbit I want to put out there. I uh, hope everybody's having a great day. You know, I hope everybody's Tai Chi is growing and doing good. So get out there and, you know, give them hell. <laughs> All right, out.